I recently came across this paper on work and how spending too much time doing it can bring down our internal mental vibe. Which, when you think of it, kind of makes sense because no one likes work. Isn't that why mainstream media is snitching on employees across the globe for quiet quitting? This got me thinking, what's the alternative? What happens when we don't work? When we stay at home, watching daytime television and frolicking around aimlessly all day? Well, wouldn't you know it? That too is also associated with bringing down our internal mental vibe. Which interestingly, yet not surprisingly, brings us back to the word that dictates all things health and biology, context. Could it be that work in the right context is healthy while work in the wrong isn't? Let's see just how we can use this concept to potentially gain a new perspective on this work thing that we tend to do each and every day. Yo, 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 what is up? Welcome back to another week of How to Health. My name is Kevin. I run liftandbalance.com where we take aim at all things health and longevity. And we do it in an odd, weird, interesting, highly sarcastic way. Today, we're gonna explore the inner biological byproducts of this thing we call work. Trying to get a grip on what exact components of it drive positive and negative psychological outcomes. As always, reviewing some data and closing with some tactical ways to improve your mental situation, no matter what your work circumstance looks like. And keeping that mental boogie monster at bay. Because when it comes down to it, as counterintuitive as it may seem, we're likely happier when we work. And that's because it's something we've done since the beginning of our existence. Because before we started commuting to the office, our job was survival. Millions of years ago as primates and hundreds of thousands of years ago as early humans. We clocked in when the sun came up and spent the day performing the sometimes trivial yet absolutely necessary tasks to survive. Was it glamorous? Probably not, but I think we're all grateful it was done or else we wouldn't be here chilling on the tube of Yub. Now, slowly, as we've all come to know, this work has evolved into centralized profit-driven activities done to fund the working population's basic survival needs and in the process becoming the center of the modern intelligent walking ape's life. And well, for many, becoming one of the primary sources of their unhappiness and even driver of depression. But just like everything else in this revolving world of complexity, especially our inner biological world, where we haven't even scratched the surface of understanding, it's not that simple. Let's talk about why. If you are a human, and even if you're an advanced extraterrestrial life form playing one on planet Earth, it's likely you've experienced bouts of feeling down in the dumps, like complete and total garbage, mentally drained, physically fatigued, unmotivated for tomorrow with a sole desire for a blanket, comfy couch, snacks, and TV. These days, here and there, seem to be a normal part of being a modern human, a byproduct of having the most cognitively capable mind on this planet and living in the most prosperous times in history. Now, the problems arise when these symptoms become one's baseline from periods ranging from days to weeks to months to years, which ultimately ends up being the clinical classification of depression a diagnosis which unfortunately is becoming exceedingly more common, currently affecting over 250 million people worldwide. Now, the tricky thing about this condition is the fact that there is no one clear and cut answer of what exactly it is and how exactly it operates. Only a loose list of commonalities and hypotheses, including imbalance of hormones and neurotransmitters, genetic predispositions, emotional lifestyle factors such as stress, anxiety, and trauma, environment, both social and physical, lifestyle, think diet, movement, and sleep, and an accumulation of metabolic dysfunction or impaired biological functions due to a mix and match of a lot of the factors just mentioned, which ultimately impact the brain. Long story short, there is no easy answer, and everyone battling this condition seems to have a unique list of variables. Which brings us back 
to work. A variable which, after looking at the list, stretches its impact across many of those categories. So much so that new research out of the University of Michigan calls out how more work was actually associated with more depression. Using a traditionally overworked population, medical residents, and tracking them over the first year of their residency, researchers found that over one third of them met the criteria for depression when working over 90 hours a week, noting that there was a clear elevation in risk with every five additional hours worked over the standard 40. Now, it would simply be naive to assume that hours worked was the causal component here. Instead, a perfect storm of biological dysfunction is more likely to blame. Things like chronic stress, poor eating, deprived sleep, little exercise, disaligned circadian rhythms, and a nature deficit, all being ramped up due to the elevated workload. Begging the question, knowing that we live in a world where metabolic dysfunction is the norm rather than the outlier, and combining it with a modern society which is overworked and underfulfilled in the workplace, is there even a way to find a healthy work balance? Other than the careers page of basically every company in the world, of course. So with that, my multi-year search began to find a career page which told the truth about their company's work-life balance crimes. Okay, I, I really didn't do that, but there's gotta be a way to make a living without sacrificing our mental health, right? Let's do a little thought experiment. First, we need to define work. The official definition states, activities involving a mental or physical effort done in order to achieve a purpose or result. Purpose or result. Huh, so which is it? And which one's more important? Let's break it down. Compensation aside, modern day work typically falls into one of three categories. Something you're passionate about, something you're indifferent about, or something you kind of dread and despise. And when we apply a time spent factor in these three categories, you can easily see how an extended stay in any of them can very differently influence the levels of stress and lifestyle habits which ultimately regulate mental health. For example, more hours of doing something that you're passionate about can very well energize you, causing you to invest in lifestyle, see the glass half full, and ultimately improve your mental state. While more hours doing something you're indifferent or even despise, can slowly or even quickly do the opposite. Every situation is dictated by context. And the cold hard truth is, due to the highly weighted factor, which is compensation, many people in the modern world find themselves in the indifferent or despised category rather than the passion one, chasing the results rather than the purpose. And guess what? Research shows a lack of purpose to be associated with constrictions in energy, action, and body. Potentially explaining why the people who solely chase the money are often the unhappiest. So how can we apply the philosophies of doing what you can with what you got and owning your health to make the best of our situation and not leave our day-to-day -day happiness to chance? Here are some ways to hedge your bets and put your pretty cool meat suit in the best possible position for good vibes. First, it's important to recognize that purpose and results are not mutually exclusive, meaning you can and should strive for both. If you get them from the same work, awesome. Checkmate, you win. But more realistically and totally norm LA, you will likely find them across several forms of work. Maybe you have a job which you are indifferent about, which provides the results of money to support you and your family. Great, but you find true purpose in helping people improve their health and longevity in odd, weird, interesting, highly sarcastic ways. So you start an educational content company which gets you excited to get up each and every day. You still solve the equation, just in a different way. Everyone's happiness equation is different because everyone's situation is different. The moral of the story is make sure you find both. Because if you spend 90 hours a week doing something you despise, chasing the sole result of compensation, the gap in purpose is going to eat you alive and ultimately manifest 
as regret. Now, that's solely the work side of the equation. The equally important other side is lifestyle. Because ultimately, this depression thing is a byproduct of one's purpose mixed with their cellular and metabolic efficiency. And there's been a sharp decline in both over the last few hundred years. So before going bottoms up in prescriptions, ask yourself if you've made a conscious effort in maximizing these natural health and healing factors. First, do you get consistent fresh air, sunlight, and connection to the earth? There's a growing body of evidence supporting the strong association between nature and overall cellular, metabolic, and psychological health, influencing things such as stress hormones, micronutrient balance, and inflammation. So aim to spend 20 to 60 minutes outside a few times a day, especially in the morning, as early sunlight is a recipe for biological success. Next, the best mood boosting prescription there is. Exercise. When you exert yourself physically, you not only alter your physiological state, but your biochemical state as well. Activating ancient areas of the brain, such as the periaqueductal gray, which release natural pain-relieving opioids and cannabinoids, while also upregulating the secretion of mood-boosting feel-good neurochemicals called endorphins. 30 minutes of moderate exercise a day will do your mind wonders. And when it's time to refuel, some good mood, food, and hydration is an awesome goal. These are high quality foods and water packed with macro and micronutrients that support proper energy metabolism, mitochondrial efficiency, nervous system function, the trillions of microbes that live in your gut, and provide an overall anti-inflammatory effect rather than an inflammatory one. These are real whole foods foods your great-grandparents would recognize, wild, organic, free-range, and grass-fed, all of which effects will never be maximized unless you are getting high-quality circadian-aligned sleep, waking up when the sun comes up and resting when it sets. As disalignment from these innate biological rhythms have been associated with a plethora of delirious cellular and metabolic effects. So building good routines and sleep hygiene is not only critical, it's life-changing. Finally, ask yourself, how do I manage stress? The chronic elevation of the fight or flight nervous system has been associated with all things nefarious at the cellular, metabolic, and psychological level. And it happens to be attached to the hip with longevity liability numero uno, chronic inflammation. So make stress management a priority. Breath work, meditation, journaling, self-care, exercise, real nourishment, and sleep are all ways to proactively modulate this stress response. Listen, just a few things to think about. All these topics, might I add, we have deep dives and playlists about across this channel. Because at the end of the day, if we know anything for certain, it's that this thing called life is a balancing act. And our headspace on any given day comes down to a number of different factors, many of which we can directly influence. So why not build routines to do just that because constantly operating in an impaired cellular and metabolic state will almost certainly have you in a below average mental state compared to your potential. And mixing this with a life of work, which you do not find any purpose in, sets the stage for the mental boogie monster to come out and start causing a psychological ruckus. So no matter where you are, the occupation you're in or the results and purpose that you're chasing, know that without investing in the lifestyle habits that allow your biological wiring to operate efficiently, even purpose-filled work can end up posing a mental well-being challenge. Because ironically, feeling good each and every day takes work, but there's no better return on investment than waking up feeling physically and mentally good every damn day. So don't quietly quit on yourself. You're worth it. And never let anyone tell you different.